24 minutes to 8 o'clock time for us to look at the dailies and I'll go straight to introducing the panel that we have here this morning. I'll start with my extreme left where we're joined by Honorable Antonio Loach, who's a member of parliament for Madare. Thank you for joining us, sir. We are also joined by Honorable John Kagushia, Speaker of Nyeri County Assembly. Thank you for joining us. And last but not least, Gabriel Mudama, who is the political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us bright and early. Uh, today being Tuesday. And uh, now, straight to the standard, where we're going to start with the headline where there was in Uhuru Raila parties. And the handshake thawed tension between the president and opposition leader, but stoked very internal rivalries among their loyalists. Uh, loyalists. And I'll start with you, Muduma, with uh, maybe just looking at it from a bird's eye perspective. Uh, and the handshake is one that, of course, uh, initially was shrouded with a lot of mystery, right. and that also <laughs> caused a lot of distrust, both between the two parties, but also internally. But your analysis of what has played out so far now that we even have the proposed BBI report. Right. Well, to, to the fact, and first of all, good morning. I, I think you've called it right when you say, you know, um, how the handshake came in, mm. and actually from both divides, people are questioning what is the handshake. What's going because on? Only two people who are leaders of those two coalitions, you know, are the ones who first met. So, I mean, it is understood that, you know, uh, people came to the leaders, What tell us what this is all about. And, you know, as we gear towards what you call internal party uh, elections, you're going to see this, you know, this, this matters flaring up, mm -hmm. both on the Jubilee side of things and also uh, ODM. in ODM. And now ODM just being a party, you know, they... <laughs> They ditched NASA. Now ODM is just a party. So I think uh, their infightings may be fewer. But now Jubilee being a coalition, I think we expect quite a lot. And you may actually have seen many uh, party members are starting to push their leaders to call for PG meetings. I know for Jubilee, they've actually kept insisting mm. for the head of the party, who's uh, you know his the excellency, president. the president, to call a PG meeting. So. Uh, probably as we get into next year, things may actually be you may know, get a little more bit, uh, uh, yeah, a little volatile. bit serious. All Correct. right, uh, John Kagushi, a member of Jubilee Party, your uh, maybe comments on what's happening within Jubilee. There definitely uh, has been a bit of you know disagreements here and there to a point where we've even seen certain factions come out of that. We have, for instance, Kiele, Kieleweke. We have Tanga Tanga. Um, initially, we even had ladies who had their own side, but maybe your comments on what's happening internally. Uh, we have uh, more confusion with the political parties, not, not just Jubilee, but mm. all the political parties that we have in Kenya and also the coalitions. As it were, we have mm. uh, new coalitions every time we are up for another election. And I do not think it's going to be very different when now we get to 2022. We are likely to have new uh, coalitions that will also be coming up. Uh, but as we talk now, uh, Jubilee has a push and pull uh, because we have uh, members who uh, have uh, their loyalty, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, to the president and uh, another group which has, uh, uh, they have their loyalty to uh, both the president and the deputy president. And that, what is confounding is that all of them are pledge allegiance. Of course, the ones who are in Tangatanga, they pledge allegiance to both the president and the, and deputy, the deputy president. president. Mm. But the ones who are in Kieleweke pledge allegiance to the president. So we, we believe that uh, with time it will be clearer probably uh, where the two leaders are going. Because what will determine the uh, end result also is uh, uh, the, the possibility of having either the Jubilee party remaining intact and together or uh, having new coalitions where some members of Jubilee may want to opt out and join others in a new coalition. Uh, but what is interesting is uh, the leaders who are ousted seems to be reorganizing themselves and coming together once again. Mm -hmm. And the elected leaders seem to also be uh, coalescing a little bit more towards the deputy president. Mm. Yeah, so and, and, and are you concerned that you've not had a PG meeting as Jubilee since 2017 and uh, it looks like the party leader is not in a rush to have one? He may not be in a rush to have one uh, because there are challenges <laughs> within the political party. Mm. Uh, because I, I, I think uh, the organization that we have seen so far, mainly the elected leaders, seems to be more comfortable uh, you know, wa working and charting their own way forward. I think sometimes because they think there is likelihood that Jubilee might be abandoned and another coalition formed 
and most of them would want to remain in Jubilee and uh, continue with the dream of the 10-10 uh, arrangement of uh, leadership where you have 10 for the president and 10 for the deputy president. So you have uh, uh, most of them now pulling together towards ensuring that that is met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then uh, the leaders who are ousted seems to, uh, to think otherwise. otherwise. Uh, and you see all of these people are members of Jubilee Party. Mm. Yeah, but of course, you, you find the ones who are elected now do have sway. Okay. Honorable Luch, uh, according to this article, leaders split over the Secretariat and Election Board, which are accused of uh, operating like cartels. Would you agree with uh, that analysis in ODM? <coughs> okay. Well, first of all, I, uh, I think that, um, you know, every election cycle we have formations, a political formation, and I think the most stable one has perhaps been, uh, the more constant one has been ODM, gravitating around COD, and I think then uh, COD transited into uh, NASA. And if you look at um, the kind of arrangement that has been there, it's been like post-election coalition, uh, speaking to the general question about the discord in, uh, and the possible uh, disintegration people are talking about or the fallout. Before I, I come to your question on the ODM secretariat, is that um, uh, the, the, the NASA and then the, the, the court previously coalitions were post-election, and in light of the fact that no government was formed, it's usually very difficult. I think we need to appreciate that uh, to hold a coalition, and we need to credit CORD and then NASA for having tried to hold as long as it has. And even NASA, even at, uh, as we look at the top, looking as if it's pulled already in different directions, uh, you'll appreciate that within the parliament itself, uh, the arrangement there is actually NASA. You have the uh, minority whip, minority uh, leader, and the other arrangement in, in terms of the, the, the committees and all that, the arrangements within uh, the NASA uh, framework itself. Mm. Um, so within NASA now, what you're seeing is, is that after the election, there seems to have been the handshake and then the discontent that came with the handshake were we supposed to have been consulted or not consulted, and then you saw partners pulling uh, left, right, and, uh, and center. And then there was the Embakasi thing, in which I think Wiper thought that ODM should have ceded and allowed them to continue. I think that sowed the seeds towards the final disintegration. ODM went to court on the Mosumra, uh, justifiably thought that he fought up to the whatever stage he fought and he was entitled to. And remember, the margin was very small. It was less than a 1,000. Mm. So uh, then it, there was payback time, if you ask me, in Kibra, in which uh, Waipa seems to have gravitated towards Fort Kenya. And then there was um, uh, ANC, which filled the Dowalo. And I think it just went out. I think really it's disintegrated. Mm. I think all but in Parliament, NASA does not uh, exist, if, right. you, if you ask me, except in Parliament itself. Then if you go to Jubilee itself, I think the genesis is uh, what he said, the, 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 the idea that uh, the president wants to secure his legacy versus 2022, and then there is the handshake inside here. And the fear that is there an arrangement with the uh, for prime minister, former prime minister, in respect of the 2022, they have constantly said, we have not spoken about 2022. This is about trying to steady the ship. I think the president re recently captured it properly, more than I could do, that we are trying to redirect the river. Back to so, so if you summarize the handshake in that context, uh, one side of Jubilee has refused to look at it in terms of this is about legacy, stating the election cycle, so we don't fight every year. And they seem to constantly think there is a referendum, and this referendum always comes with formations, which is true, and the fear is legitimate, that every cycle, especially when there's a referendum, they will come out formations. Mm. And so even as they support this, they support it with a pinch of salt that, okay, we go to the referendum, but let's have an uncontested one. Why do you think they're doing that? Because of the fear that a referendum will come with a yes and a no and pro and not pro. Mm. So let me come now to the secretariat. I think uh, ODM is uh, one of the parties that has carried out uh, elections. I think in the last um, two election cycles, we've done two elections. I don't think there's any other party that has done that. Maybe the levels of success are different. Uh, we've done nominations, we've done uh, nominations including in Kibra when people expected a serious fallout, chaos, men in black, it didn't happen. 
uh, we are constantly innovating and constantly trying to reform. We put in recently a task force uh, led by uh, Catherine Muma, in which we did some introspection. How did we do our nominations? How did we carry out uh, party elections and all other things? And there are reforms, internal reforms that are constantly going on. Uh, so, of course, there, there, there are weak areas in which people will point out to different areas. I wouldn't say myself that uh, uh, there the, the, the are camps, if that is what uh, I hear you to be saying is, 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 is in, in the, the standard. The suggesting, yes. Is suggesting that there are Actually, camps. Actually, it has referred to them as cartels. Cartels within the... <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. There will be personalities and there will be people who gravitate towards this or the other, but I wouldn't call them cartels. Mm. They have served as well within the party. Uh, at least we call parliamentary group meetings. I haven't seen Jubilee uh, do that, I think, uh, since the, uh, the cancellation of the presidential elections. Correct. So at least we have something functional. Mm. I don't think you can call them cartels. All right, and yeah. uh, we'll come back to that when we are discussing political point and alliances that are looming. But let's look at other stories that are in the papers. Of course, there was a sad news uh, that hit the country yesterday, and this was uh, the death of Odek, uh, who has been referred to as a gifted legal mind. Uh, Post-mortem results are yet to come out. But of course, just to give you a very brief opportunity, just to give your condolences, and I'll start with you, uh, Muguma. Uh, actually, we do. And uh, for, for, for the longest time, when uh, last year, you know, uh, we, we, uh, the, the news came out that uh, he was going to be a key witness in one of the, uh, in, in one of the, cases, the cases that are going in, in court. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other jurisdictions where you've uh, actually had him, uh, the late actually, uh, give out uh, very legal, very great, you know, legal advice. So I think we've totally, lost. like, you know, and I agree with you, really, really lost a very good legal mind. Mm -hmm. But having said that, there's something that was carried on the newspapers yesterday, which I think was quite, you know, jumping the gun. I think, you know, how, you know, the, 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 the scene, you know, where he passed on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a newspaper that has actually led to the fact of how that scenario was. And I think from where I'm seated, it is wrong at this point to start pointing or giving Kenyans a pointer as to start thinking of anything which, of, of, of something that was planned. Mm -hmm. and, and I think to me, when such things happen, it is always good to keep clear and we wait until, Absolutely. you know, you know, until the, you know, the pathologist are able to to, to finalize uh, their exercise mm -hmm. and we are told you know what uh, what took uh, the life of this gifted young man all right um, oh, um, Kagusha, John Kagusha. yeah I, I would like to really condole with the family of uh, professor deck and uh, I understand is really a difficult time for them especially when they lose a family member who was full and whole and uh, uh, looked healthy as a nation, also, we lose a good legal mind that has uh, shaped our uh, uh, jurisprudence in this country in a very big way. And uh, we, we know that judiciary, uh, they, they are actually struggling to even put up numbers to help them do the cases that they have, especially considering that at the moment they are mm -hmm. struggling to have uh, a list of judges to be approved to serve in the Court of Appeal. And so when we are still at that and we have lost one of the Court of Appeal judges, then it means that as a country we have a big loss. I would like to condole with the judiciary as well and as with Kenyans and pray that God may uh, rest his soul in peace. And then also hope that we can have a speedy and quick uh, investigations so that we know what may have happened to him. Mm -hmm. We have had these cases now for uh, rather long where we have senior Kenyans and even Kenyans of... Uh, uh, I mean, even citizens who are of Mwananchi uh, caliber uh, who have also lost their lives uh, in these mysterious ways, we need to, to understand why is it as Kenyans we have so many people who are going in, you know, very uh, mysterious and sudden death. And uh, hopefully we can address this is a, is a matter of health concern in the Absolutely. country. All right, uh, Honorable Wood. Um, yeah, this is sad because less than a year ago we lost another judge, Justice Ongote. In similar circumstances, he went to the gym. Yeah. Collapsed Parklands. and then died in Parklands. Mm. And um, now again, uh, uh, there was no indication, at least that we knew of, of uh, a history of health uh, challenges. And it's, it, it's very saddening. So my condolences to the family. I think the legal profession has lost a very brilliant uh, legal mind. Maybe this is a time for us to introspect. And uh, really, there should be no room for 
for, for speculation, but uh, we, we need to sit down sometimes and think, uh, is there too much pressure on our judges? You know, there are things we assume uh, and the expectations we have with the limited number of uh, judges on the bench, and I hope the president looks at this opportunity to at least try and, 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 and assent to mm -hmm. the number of judges, those who have no uh, issues or question mark like he had uh, indicated, so that at least the level of uh, the Court of Appeal has more judges and more minds and more people. I'm not saying that's the cause of his death, but it's very possible that we have judges who sit well, under very pressure. serious pressure mm. for delivery, especially the Court of Appeal, especially the Court of Appeal. Mm. I, I, I want to personally condole him because Professor Deck was my lecturer in international trade law, a very brilliant mind. He was my lecturer in, in, in labor law. And um, I benefited a lot in my surgeons in courts with election petitions, with the jurisprudence he developed in election uh, law. So I think he placed his indelible mark in the legal history, uh, and that the, the Court of Appeal, the legal fraternity, will really miss his input. All right, and uh, may he rest in peace. Let's now move on to just looking at the headline of the Daily Nation and uh, as we wind up the newspaper review. Ruto, out to crush me, says Mutua. Let me start with you, Honorable Luoch, especially as a legal mind. Um, and I don't know, um, we, I guess there is a lot of uh, conversation that possibly goes on in the corridors. Uh, but uh, Mutua has come out, Governor Mutua has come out to say that some of the conversations they had with the Deputy President, uh, with Senator um, uh, Murkomen and uh, the National Assembly Majority Leader Adan Duale left him scared for his life. What are your thoughts on this, even from a legal perspective? I, I, I don't know, because, um, you know, I, 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 I am, uh, I'm not quite... Um, saying that Mutua is himself uh, an angel. Um, he's somebody who is a former spokesman, a government spokesman. He's a person who is, loves the media and loves publicity. But I doubt that Mutua would stage manage and go to the extent of doing this kind of, I mean, it would be something made out of Hollywood stuff. <laughs> For him to come out and just say, it's like me saying, that I went and greeted the president and he gave me a threat. Mm. I mean, I would, I would, politically, we do a lot of mischievous things. I don't think this is one of those things you could play with and say, <laughs> the deputy president threatened me when he didn't threaten me, threaten you. So I think there is some truth for it. I will give Governor Mutua the benefit of the doubt. And I think that he did well to speak because one, with the litany of cases of people who die mysteriously, Jacob Juma, former Kiku UMP, we have, the list is endless, and these things, once you die, people say, don't leave any stone unturned, and one year down the line, people forget. Mm. So I think Governor Mutua didn't want to be one of those many histories, and I think he spoke to his family. I saw his lawyer, Nyamu, there, and I think they told him, look, speak. Sometimes speaking out helps. Help. So I think that's what Mutua did. I don't really think he means any offense or wanted any mischief. I think he just said, for whatever it is that this was worth, let me not take any chances. Mm. Let me speak out. Maybe it might save my life. All right, Muduma, yeah. your thoughts on this? And there are those, there's a narrative that uh, this is just, uh, you know, Mutua doing one of his, uh, even Murkomen is quoted okay. as saying, Nikobra's Cobra quote. Squad. It's one of his uh, productions. <laughs> well, first of all, like uh, what uh, uh, Honorable Lucha said, uh, at the end of the day, you know, Governor Mutua is a politician. And anything can, can flare up. But one thing I'm liking about Mutua is that he seems to remember quite a lot and, and in, in detail, detail and in detail so if this is something that happened or we are told happened on either Tuesday or Wednesday at, by the way at the precinct of, of State House you know for him to have come you know on Monday to go to the police station I, I, I honestly think it would have come sooner if that threat was you know or he interpreted that threat as, as serious now i am not taking it easy if there was a threat then you know it has to be followed to the logic conclusion i mean like uh what Kelly is saying and, you know and threats, remember, threats, and remember, threats i don't threats. want to interrupt you none other than the deputy president himself mm. when he thought there was a threat from for, for on his life mm. yeah. by some cabinet ministers meeting yeah. in Tika mm. and he pointed a finger at Kibicho. Mm. What did the deputy president do? Mm. He didn't speak. Mm. So I agree, Mutua has to speak. The deputy yes. president had a similar Correct. threat. 
and he took some time. I think he took longer than Mutua. Absolutely. He probably took more than a month, mm. but he spoke. Because why? Even as deputy president, you're not immune from mysterious death. Correct. Yes. And I agree. And I agree. But what I'm saying is any, any death threats must be treated as Seriously. serious as, as, as they mm. come. So by, you know, as, uh, as much as we would like to talk about this issue, it's a still, it's a he said, he said, mm. you know, kind of thing. And we leave it so at that until... We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let let's, let's the facts thing. come out. But, mm. uh, you know, the root cause of the thing is that if it's a death threat and mm. Mutua felt like his life was actually threatened, the best thing is to... All right, John, I'm doing. told we're out of time, but maybe just 30 seconds on your comments on that. What you no, think? From uh, listening to uh, Governor Mutua, I, I did not hear like he said, he was the, the words that were uttered because they are the words that are uttered in a threat are very very important mm -hmm. and the words that he quoted did not seem to amount to a death threat uh, but they amounted to a threat which he may have interpreted yeah. Yeah. as death threats yeah because the issue of nitakugonga the issue of the, the, the demeanor that the deputy president according to he says, shook his hand yeah. very firmly yeah. yeah. looked at him with a very stern face yeah. Yeah. And then he walked away yeah. 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 his hand yeah. when we finish the show please yeah. make sure that your handshake is not just a normal handshake we need to take a break gentlemen we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, let's look at political points, and we'll be looking at some...